Hey guys, this is Strife Crew. Uh, I'm going to be doing a review of the Black Rock Mountain set that's come out. Um, I'm going to be mostly reviewing the cards on Constructed Viability. I'm not going to be talking too much about how the cards work for Arena or Troll decks or whatever. So I guess it's going to start with Blackwing Technician. This card, I think it's going to be a staple of Dragon decks. If Dragon decks do pop up, which I'm sure there are some classes will be doing Dragon decks, and I'll be going over those, I guess, when I get to the class cards. But I think this is pretty much going to be a staple of those decks. Because most dragons are big creatures, all these decks are going to be late game oriented, and you definitely need something to hold down the line early game. I guess like it has a really good ratio, being a 2-4 or 3-5, that kind of defensive ratio, so it can trade downwards against like multiple small minions, probably like multiple 1 and 2 drops. It's like really how that's targeted. Um, some things that are going to be weird though with this card are like the battle cry. The earlier you have to activate this battle cry, if you're holding a dragon, the harder it's going to be because I mean you, nobody wants to keep a card like Alex Straza or Yosera in their opening hand, and there's not actually too many other dragons to choose from. The smallest dragons are probably around four to five mana with Twilight Drake and Azure Drake, and you know it depends how easy it is to keep those cards in your opening hand. But I, I'd say that this card is a fairly strong card, and it, it, it should be used in almost every deck that is going for a dragon theme. Blackwing Corruptor, this is I guess like the, what, like the big brother of the last one. This is basically like a 5 mana fire elemental if you're holding a dragon. One thing is, if you're already in turn 5, it's going to be much easier to activate the battle cry as you draw more cards. Have a much higher chance of having a card like... For example, Ysera or Chromagus in her hand at this point. I guess, like, this for the most part, it's gonna be like this effect is mostly for tempo decks de dealing three damage. And I, I don't think most dragon decks are gonna be like that. They're more, more like big, big control decks. But I still think that the effect is pretty strong. So, I mean, looking at like in a vacuum, I actually think a five mana, five four is with the fire mental effect is stronger than the. 3 mana 3 5 most likely but I feel like it's a little bit awkward to use in a, in a dragon themed deck um, because of like the tempo concerns. I guess I had to value the two cards around the same. I can see this card showing up in a lot of decks that are utilizing dragons as well just to just to like remove remove maybe small minions and and have a body left over. I I don't think that the ratio is that great though. I think 4-5 is a lot better. Uh, or even something like 3-6 if you have 9 power in total for, for dragon decks. So I guess maybe, yeah, around the same as the other one. Maybe a little bit weaker even. Alright, so Chromagus. This is kind of a tough one. I guess like I would have to compare this maybe to something like Sneed's Old Treader. It's like a value card that doesn't die to Big Game Hunter, but also doesn't really have any immediate effects either. So um, another card you can compare this to is Ysera. I think Ysera and Sneed's are kind of similar. They're I guess very good in control matchups, but against faster decks it doesn't provide a taunt or something like Ragnaros effect that immediately kills something. And it's like a card that that's like a really grindy card. One thing that's really interesting about a card like this is in Hearthstone, when you're playing a, c a control mirror, it's like kind of weird because every game actually comes down to fatigue. Not not so that everyone always fatigues out, but fatigue is always a concern in Hearthstone when you're playing, say, warrior versus warrior control. Uh, and I feel like most of the time, Chromagus is probably going to be used in late game control decks, and I think it's a little bit weird to use Chromagus in a lot of the decks like that because it doesn't draw from outside your library like Ysera, so it doesn't actually, I guess, like boost the total strength of your deck, like the sum of 30 cards. It doesn't give you something like Duplicate or Thought Seal, allowing you to run like 31, 32 card decks, uh, something with Ysera. So I think that's actually a problem. So, I mean, I can even see with a lot of a lot of cards, like something like r Ramp for dragons, because I know like Palin has a, a dragon ramper. Maybe it's going to be used more in mid-range decks where you can afford to draw additional cards because you're not really planning going into fatigue. I actually feel like maybe this is a better card to top out your curve as a mid-range deck compared to a control deck. Ultimately, this is one of the only dragons that you can play because there is the dragon theme going on and there's just not that many dragons when i looked at like the first two cards and when i just saw the spoilers it, i thought that a lot of the cards were really strong but looking at the whole set i think the biggest problem of the dragon 
theme right now in Blackrock is there's just not a lot of great dragons. There's a lot of good cards that benefit from having a dragon in your hand. There's just simply not a lot of good dragons. So uh, this is the only 8 mana dragon is another thing. So Dragonid Crusher. I didn't realize this was dragon at first, but yeah, okay. So 6 mana, 6-6. Six, six. If your opponent has 15 or less health, game plus 3 plus 3. <laughs> So I'm not exactly too excited about this card. I, th I think it's pretty weak. Six mana six six is not good at all. Uh, obviously, Boulder for Sogre is six seven. Six mana for nine nine is probably not even good as well, unfortunately, because of Doctor Boom. That's just the way it's it works. Unfortunately, I'm not even sure if the Battle Cry is an upgrade necessarily most of the time, since it's kind of doubtful whether a six six is even worse than a nine nine half the time. I mean, you can see this. It's not just I'm trolling, but. People often choose to make Edmund Van Cleef a 6-6 six, six instead of an 8-8 eight, eight on purpose, for example. So there's a real reason for it, and it's the big game hunter. I think the most valuable part of this card is the fact that it's a dragon and not even the battle cry. I think this dragon modifier on this card is worth more than the battle cry, honestly, just because it's a way to activate a lot of the dragons. I don't, I don't see this card being played, honestly, much in Constructed, if at all. So. Dragon Egg. Whenever this main takes damage, summon a 2-1 Wolp. This is interesting. Obviously, the first thing that comes to mind is a com comparison to Nerubian Egg. It's much weaker than Nerubian Egg if it just dies, for example, in, in one hit. You're paying one less mana, but you're only getting a 2-1 instead of a 4-4. But I can see this card being more more for decks that are running a lot of buffs compared to decks that are just trying to activate the egg with the death rattle. Because if you think about, like, say you Blessing of Kings the Dragon Egg, compared to Blessing of Kings, the Nerubian Egg. It, it does mean that this effect can proc multiple times more and more often compared to just always get, always getting a 4-4 at the end. Also, I can see decks, kind of like Zoo-ish decks, with a lot of things like Abyss of Sergeant and Dark Iron Dwarf, Defender Vargas, Darwolf Alpha being a, using using this card. Unfortunately, I don't think that the aggro Zoo with the Doom Guards can use Nerubian Egg and Dragon Egg, it just simply make, makes your deck too defensive. Against a lot of matchups, you need fast openings with a lot of 3-2s, aggressive openings. You can't just play 0-2s all, all the time as an aggro deck. Immediately though, what comes to my mind with this card is like a mid-range demon, demon lock. Not a demon hand lock with Molten Giants, but a more mid-range demon lock. Running both Nerubian Egg and Dragon Egg, Hellfire, Power Roaming, Void Caller. I can see this kind of taking off. Uh, one of the big problems with the demon warlock mid-range warlock right now is that there's not a whole lot of incentive to play it over a demon handlock just going big with uh twilight drakes and giants and stuff molten giants because there's not a lot of good things to do before turn four other than playing nerubian egg and it, it i don't think it's enough with dragon egg maybe there's more incentive as well and we'll get to some of the warlock cards as well in gang boss that's a really cool one as well so yeah i think this card uh, definitely has some potential in some of those decks. I think it's pretty good. Dragonkin Sorcerer, 4 mana for a 3-5. Whenever you target this minion with a spell, gain plus 1 plus 1. So I guess what immediately comes to mind is Violet Teacher comparison. It's basically the same-ish card, except, well first of all, you have to target this minion with a spell, not cast any spell. You lose a lot of synergy there, you can't coin, you can't like do something like coin frostbolt to get 2 one ones. I think that this is, it's basically a lot more limited, even if the plus one plus one sometimes is better to have on the minion compared to summoning an apprentice, a 1-1 one, one apprentice. Uh, honestly, I think the biggest implication here of this card, again, it's kind of similar as the Draconid Crusher, the 6-6. Six, six. Uh, I think the biggest thing here is that it's actually a dragon because, again, there's a very limited amount of mid-range dragons or even small dragons. The only dragons are right now are the five nine drops, the Alexstrasza, Malikus, Anixia set, and then Deathwing. Uh, they they are adding in a, a couple more big ones as well, but it's really these mid-range dragons that there's a big deficiency in. Unfortunately, I don't think that this is strong enough as a as a three five. Uh, you're losing taunt over Senjin, and you're basically it's not a pie shredder either with how good shredder is. Yeah, I don't think this card is actually that great i i mean looking at just the power wise it might be too weak even though it's it's a dragon and i think most of the time you're better off using something like azure drake or even twilight drake it's really hard to justify using this over over even twilight drake as a four drop so i mean there's a lot not a lot of spells that target a minion you'd have to run things like blessing of kings and might or think 
things like that. And there's that's really limited compared to just general spells. So. Emperor Thurison, super powerful card, uh, six mana, five five. At the end of your turn, reduce the cost of cards in your hand by one. So this just might be, I guess, like the most obviously powerful card of the set. It's probably like you know the spike card. <laughs> What I'm thinking is that you can almost think of this as at the end of your turn, draw an Innervate, or maybe even a couple of Innervates, since if you cast two cards the next turn, you're, that's basically an Innervate. You cast four, that's two Innervates. It's not just that, though. I mean, you're unlikely going to play four cards the next turn, but those cards are all going to be reduced for, for the rest of the game. So, you know, two turns from now, you're still going to be cashing in on another Innervate and things like that. And you get it at the end of every turn. Um, card maybe you can compare it to is like Hogger, for example, six mana for a four four. That's another card where at the end of the turn you get value, you get a two two with taunt every turn. But yeah, the body on Emperor is bigger. It's a five five, and the effect just might be stronger. I think that's like this card can just change the whole dynamic of the game when you play it because. Say you play Emperor Tharison as a druid, and now since so much of playing around playing against druid is like thinking about combo and things like that, immediately you can think of like turn seven combo, perhaps turn nine double combo. You can even get double four center, double savage Lord from one turn of Emperor Tharison sticking with two innervates. I think it's possible for ten mana. Yeah, because yeah, so force nature, force nature. So I'm sure I said for innervate, innervate. But anyways, like if this card sticks around for multiple turns, I can see it just completely crushing the game. And it's actually not too weak. Even though 5-5 five is not exactly like the biggest minion, we can kind of see that from Ancient Lore that 5-5 five five is like kind of like the one of the perfect ratios of Hearthstone. It's just like it's not so big that it dies to be GH. And uh there's a lot of like four fives and I don't know, it's just like five five, even though it doesn't it's not so big that that kind of like the numbers kind of just line up perfectly. Uh, I think this is a very strong card, and it might even be the best card of Black Rock Mountain. Grim Patron. Whenever this minion survives damage, summon another Grim Patron. Five mana for three three. I mostly see this being played in obviously Warrior. I don't think this card is really playable if you play it as a five mana three three. I think you immediately need to start proccing multiple Grim Patrons. For example. A death spite whirlwind immediately could make this pretty powerful because then you'd have a 3 3 and a 3 2 and they both have the effect of summoning another grim patron that already makes the card pretty strong but a lot of the problem with a uh, warrior is you're already falling behind going to the going into your five drops so it's hard to have a weak five drop un unless you know it works out really good for you like perfectly another thing is summoning a whole bunch of grim patrons is always going to be weak to aoe so like this card is like you're really incentivized to combo from this do something like a pyromancer combo or multiple whirlwinds on the same turn and it, it kind of means that you're all in on this card and just all in to summon a whole board full of grim patrons is not that powerful it's not like something like all in to kill someone for example uh like all in like spending four card combo to do like 25 damage with like druid combo or or a charge combo with warrior with with, with Raging Worgen. If you combo Grim Patron, all it does is, even if you have a full board of like seven Grim Patrons, ultimately a lot of decks can still deal with it with just simply a Hellfire or Flame Strike. So uh, I do feel that it's probably not going to be the most powerful card. I think it's more of like a, a neat little card, but I don't see it being too competitive, unfortunately. So Hungry Dragon, four mana for a five, six dragon that summons a random one cost minion for your opponent. So I guess the cool thing about this card is it really rewards you for having board control uh it also allows you it also has like very good synergy for example with fire or axe for warrior and warrior is one of the classes that can really benefit from going dragons because it's one of the classes that already do use a lot of maybe not a lot but some dragons like alex draws it and also it goes late game as well the war control deck one of the important things is that this is a dragon and you can use this would tinker uh, the technician, the three five for for three mana. So, I think this is powerful. Originally, I thought that this was like really powerful, but I've had to downgrade my assessment since then. There are a lot of one drops that could be really annoying. Things like Flame Imp, maybe even Zombie Chow, and sometimes this card might seem like a win more card because if you don't actually have board control, like say with a Fire War Axe or 
a minion to kill their one drop. It might even potentially be worse than a Yeti or a Shredder. And you're not really even competing with Yeti at this point. You have to compete with Shredder now. If they just get a 2-1, they attack your Hungry Dragon with it. becomes a 5-4. 4 mana 5-4 is not near even nearly as good anymore. And they can do worse than that. Like Snowball, like for example, Power Roaming the minion. Again, I think that the most relevant part of this card is the fact that it's a dragon. Uh, and I, I think I see this card being used in warrior the most because it has a lot of synergy with fire war axe and i can see it being used in paladin as well because paladin has probably the best dragon i guess and the five mana for a five five dragon that makes your next dragon cost two less so you can potentially get a hungry dragon for two and also paladin is another class that can potentially deal with these random one cost minions really well uh, if you go with a muster for battle on turn three, a lot of times your your weapon can kill the one drop, or you can just s simply use a couple of your dudes. So, <laughs> major domo executus. Okay, so <laughs> as cool as this is, I'm at the rate this card a zero in constructed viability. So I'm not gonna rate every card on a number, but I guess like say if I have to rate a card like zero to five, with five being Doctor Boom level and zero being magma rage level this would be a zero <laughs> um this is basically a card that's nine mana for a nine seven with a negative death rattle the death rattle is worse than not having the effect it's like you know at first i didn't know what the replacing your hero with ragnaros the fire lord meant but as soon as i found that it sets your hp to eight life and then you get the hero power for two mana the ragnaros yeah it, it's not happening you can't you can't turn yourself into Ragnaros. You can, no one, there's almost no decks where you can survive at 8 HP. I mean, it's just you're going to be dead after after Major Domo dies. I can see this card getting BJH'd and then just immediately followed up by you just dying. So, I mean, the one saving grace is that the Ragnaros effect is much better at the beginning of your turn than the end of your turn since you can plan around it after. Most of the time, like, Ragnaros... It's much weaker to have it at the end of your turn, but still, it's nowhere near good enough to be able to replace your hero with Ragnaros. You can't play it reactively like Draxus or Alex Ross as well when you get to 1 HP, since it doesn't heal you. If you play this card at 1 HP, they're just going to kill you. If you play it at a high amount of life, they're just going to kill this card and then kill your hero. So. Nefarian, add two random spells to your hand from your opponent's class. Okay, so this is one of the new dragons. There is a lot of competition for dragons at 9 mana, since all the dragons right now are pretty much 9 mana. This is, I guess, one of the stronger ones. I guess an, a, the big problem, obviously, is it dies to Big Game Hunter. You have to kind of compare this to Ysera again, since Ysera gives you one random Ysera dream card. At the end of your turn, this gives you two immediately, so if, if Ysera dies in one turn, Ysera usually doesn't stick around too long, so... You know, if you average it, maybe like at least one card, maybe sometimes two. Um, you do draw more cards than Nefarian, but I, I probably feel that the creature is worse as an 8-8 than a, than a 4-12. Even though generally you want to have the attack and the life kind of close, 4-12 is not exactly the best ratio for your Sarah. It, it, it's kind of, it doesn't do enough damage and it has too much life. I guess like the best ratio for something with 16 power t in total is something like a 6-10 which would be perfect right outside of BGH range. And 6 is generally enough to kill everything as well. Unfortunately, Nefarian as 8-8, eight, eight, it's just, it dies too easily for, to Big Game Hunter. And I'm not exactly sure how good two random spells from your opponent's class is generally going to be. But I have to v probably value each one worse than a random dream card. So I feel like Nefarian's probably weaker than Ysera. Uh If you do need more dragons though, because a lot of the 9 man dragons are fairly unusable, then perhaps I can see Nefarian. I don't see it being having a big impact, unfortunately. Red and Black Hand, 7 mana, 8, 4. If you're holding a dragon, destroy a legendary minion. Yeah, the problem here is that the creature has 8, 4. It's not a good ratio. 8, 4 is, uh, adds up to 12. It, I mean, it's probably stronger than a 5, 5, but nowhere near as good as a 6, 6. Again, holding a dragon... I mean, this is, I guess, if this is an incentive to play a dragon deck, perhaps, but I'm not sure. I mean, the effect doesn't seem too bad, but if you actually think about it, like, a lot of decks that you, that are really popular don't actually have that many legendaries, or even any legendaries. 
uh, like Face Hunter and Zoo, like a lot of the aggro decks. Even even mid range decks like Druid and and Pal mid range Paladin, for example. It's not just overloaded with a lot of legendaries. One of the biggest implications of Rend is it's a way to deal with Lotha because Lotha usually locks you out that turn, and Lotha is not in big game hunter range. So this is one of the best ways to deal with Lotha if they play it around when you have mana to play Rend Black Hand. Uh, obviously, the other one, the big one, is Doctor Boom. Uh, I, I don't think people are going to be able to run Black Hand Sylvanas since they're going to get this card stolen by the Death Rattle of Sylvanas for the most part. So I think for the most part th this could be like a another big game hunter that also kind of works on Lothab. And there's weird things that are Archmage Antonitis so I guess I don't see this being a big game changer but I think it's you never count out situational cards. All the situational cards can impact the metagame a lot. They kind of rotate in and out, so it's probably not going to be a core card of any deck. It's more like a, another situational card that can rotate in and out depending on what you're going to play against. But an eight four is not exactly the best, the best kind of body. So volcanic drake, six mana for six four, costs one less for each mana that is turn. As much as as cool as that effect is, I think that it's this is pretty much going to be I don't know, kind of unusable. I mean, so you have to think about how much mana this card would cost in order for it to be good, right? So would you play a 4 mana for a 6-4 maybe? No one plays a 4 mana for a 5-4. Obviously 3 mana for 6-4 is amazing. So it's somewhere between, it's somewhere around 4 mana. And you need to have 2 minions die this turn in order for it to cost 4 mana. Another thing is it's a dragon, which is a huge part. I mean, it's ultimately just a vanilla 6-4. If you're going to play like a combo-ish type deck, for example, trying to like Flame Strike or Frost Note Doomsayer, drop down Volcanic Drakes in the same turn, um, you're not really benefiting from a, the dragon theme. And if you're trying to build this into a dragon deck, then I think it's very hard to proc the, the cost less part of it for the most part. So yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say about this one. I, I don't think it's that great. Okay, so I guess that's all uh, the the neutral ones. I think the, a lot of class ones are more interesting, so I'll be going over those now. All right, Axe Flinger, four mana for a two five. Whenever this minion takes damage, deal two damage to the enemy hero. First thing is like, if you think about what what how big a minion needs to be at four mana, something like a four five would be okay as a chill one. Yeti, this does have the additional effect of whenever this minion takes damage. So at worst, this minion deals two damage to enemy hero, and you can proc the effect a lot, I guess. Even if you proc it five times with five whirlwinds, it does ten damage. I mean, that might seem like a lot, but it's really hard to get really hard to get uh, that many whirlwind effects in. I think the biggest implication of Axe Flinger is that it's like you don't really use it in a combo deck. You use it in more like a beatdown deck that randomly whirlwinds a couple times with Death Spite, perhaps. The biggest part of this is not when you activate it yourself, it's more like whenever your opponent wants to kill it, say by just attacking it with with a minion or a weapon, they are at least guaranteed that 2 damage and it's kind of hard to kill 2-5 uh, in one shot sometimes. Maybe you're killing in 2 shots so you're taking 4 damage. I guess the big problem with Axe Flinger is this is not an effect that Warrior usually wants. Warrior has a very hard time being an aggro deck just because um they've always been held back even with some really good aggro cards like Corcoran Elite and uh how much damage all the weapons can do or has always been held back by the hero power for aggro decks it's just simply you can't try to it's not really efficient to try to rush someone down and armor up yourself it's much better to have something like 100 hero power so uh yeah I don't I don't think this is that strong but Core Rager. Okay, so this is one of the new Hunter mechanics. Both Hunter cards have this mechanic. If your hand is empty, gain plus three plus three. I think I'm going to talk about it a lot more during the other Hunter card because that one's more interesting. I, honestly, I just don't think this is very good. Uh, again, if it, if you do get the Battle Cry, you'll get Big Game Hunter. That's kind of like a four drops kind of the limit where it doesn't matter that much to get Big Game Hunter, but, but still, I mean, no one plays a four mana, five, four beast, the tall long strider, and uh, this effect is actually much harder to, to activate than people think in Hunter, and when I go over the other card, I'll talk more about it, but I think the, this effect is going to be played in, in different types of Hunter decks than we see nowadays, so. But yeah, the, it's 4 man 4-4 four, four beasts is not good. 4 man for 7-7 seven, seven beasts is, I mean, it's probably good, but it's not that great, so I don't, this is not good. Not a good card. Uh, Dark Iron Skulker, 5 mana for a 4-3. I guess Bellcry is basically AoE backstab on enemy minions. 
It really does play to rogue strengths, this card. I kind of like the design of this card. I really like the undamaged enemy minions part of this compared to just two damage to everything like a Consecrate. Because one of your win conditions as a rogue is basically to kill the enemy's minions on the same turn you develop minions. And you really snowball from there. Like that's rogue specialty. You know, you have cards like SI Agent. You have weapons... Uh, you have things like prep, you have weapons that can stick from last turn. Like, all, most of Rogue's game plan is based around this concept, and uh, this is a way where you can add a powerful card that doesn't get too powerful, because if this could combo with Backstab, it can both both Backstab and Skulk or something, it's just too easy to take that initiative as Rogue. I know, like, when you're playing against Rogue, the most painful thing is when they do finally take initiative, or when they do take that initiative and you're trying to play from behind as a rogue, it's very hard from there because you never feel great dropping minions against rogue when you're behind. There's cards like Sap, and then they always they always have very good removal as well with the weapons and eviscerate and blade flurry. So, so yeah, uh, I, I I like this card a, a decent amount. And I think it's a pretty powerful card. I don't play that much rogue, but I I'm, I'm sure rogues are gonna fit in this card in their deck at some point. I mean, I didn't think Tinker Roll was very powerful when I first saw it, and Rogues managed to fit that in. I mean, this is basically exactly the type of effect that Rogue wants, so. Demon Wrath. Three mana, deal two damage to all non-demon minions. So yeah, I mean, this is one of the decks that could make that, the mid-range demon lock work really well. There's more and more demons coming in. Like at first, before at the vanilla Hearthstone, there weren't actually that many demons. Now there's just more and more demons. Uh, you can actually see a card like Demon Wrath making sense because you know before there you can't play all all Demon Warlock. But now there's more and more. Uh, perhaps you can play a very heavy Demon Warlock and then add in things like Nurbian Egg and maybe maybe Dragon Egg where you don't really mind dealing t t two damage to them. In fact, you might even prefer to deal two damage to them and run a card like Demon Wrath. If you can think about it as like a three mana deal two damage to all enemy minions, not your own minions, it should be pretty strong but unfortunately even then it's still not gonna be too great i mean consecrate is one more mana to deal two damage to only enemy minions and it deals two face damage as well so i think i i don't feel like uh this card is gonna be that strong even if the mid-range steam locks take off uh, i don't see this being a big game changer i think so dragon consort yeah this is a card i was talking about five mana five five the next dragon you play costs two less so this is very powerful. 5 mana 5 5 is, is already a pretty powerful body. I mean, you can get strong, stronger 5 drops, basically. I mean, people don't play 5 mana for 4 7 generally, even though there are 5 mana 4 7s. So, I mean, it's not the 5 5, it's, it's just it's that great for 5. Lothev has, has a Valkyrie as well, but you can kind of think of this as 5 mana 5 5 Droll and Innervate. So, it's kind of similar to Azure Drake in, in, in a way, because Azure Drake, you get a 4-4, but you get the spell power. I think 5-5 five, five is easily way better than 4-4 four, four at spell power. Uh, a lot of decks that use Azure Drake don't even benefit from spell power that much. Uh, it's just more like for the for the draw effect. This doesn't draw from outside your library, but you know it, it is basically drawing an innervate, and you do have to play a dragon deck for you to play a dragon consort, so I think it's good. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very powerful. I, I, I like this card a lot. It's just dragons don't go easily in Paladin, since most Paladins right now are, are mid-range. Uh, but I can see new dragon control decks coming out for Paladin just because of this card. I don't think there would be a whole lot of r reason to play a big controlled dragon Paladin without Dragon Concert. So. And also Paladin has a lot of 5 drops in, the, in like Quartermaster already. And I like how this one is like another direction. It takes it in another direction for Paladin because you're almost never going to use a deck with both Quartermaster and Dragon Consort. They're like different types of decks, so. Dragon's Breath. Five mana for a deal four damage mage card. Cost one less for each mana that died this turn. So yeah, the problem here is, does mage really need more fireball effects or frostball effects? I mean, a lot of mages do cut fireball already, and it's hard to really fit in a worse version of, of those cards. Um, it's, it's too hard to proc. So I, I really see this card only being played in mage decks that really want a lot of burn. For example, something like Freeze Mage, uh, or even maybe new decks, mages that come up, something like a more combo type mage. Um, I mean, there have been kind of like one turn kill combo mages running Sorcerer Apprentice with the Ice Lance combos and spell power, such as Blood Mage. I can see some crazy combos popping up from 
say double sorcerer apprentice blood mage maybe even ancient mage the one that gives two spell power if you have minions and just like trying to combo a whole lot of frost bolts and ice lances and dragon breaths in the same turn uh, you still are going to have to kill minions though it might be that you can do something like a flame strike or doomsayer from last turn but then it's going to be hard for you to get all the sorcerer princess off but yeah i mean i can see this being basically being played played in very heavy like one turn kill mages this is not going to be played in a mage deck that's like a tempo mage trying to ride. You're never going to really want to proc this effect with minions and then dragon's breath, right? Because like say you're a tempo mage, like mana worm or whatever, and you're and you're trying to snowball on creature damage. You don't trade the minions and then fireball them in the face. You fireball the minion and then hit them in the face with your existing minions. So it doesn't really work like that. You know, you can't play dragon's breath in minion based aggro decks. It's more like because you can't trade off your minions and then Dragon's Breath. That's, it's like the opposite sound. Drew the Flame. I do remember reading about this that it's a beast, but a 3 mana 2 5 or 3 mana 5 2 is, is not going to be very powerful, I think. The ratios are kind of too skewed, I feel. A 3 4 or 4 3 is probably stronger. No one plays a 3 mana 4 3. I mean, there's Injured Blade Master already. That's a 4 3 for 3. No one plays that. 3 4, there's Spider Tank. I, I, just, I just don't feel like this is good the choose one i just don't feel like you will ever almost choose the five two uh this is a pretty skill based card a lot of players will be it like if you're good enough you can make the right choice i mean for the most part people are going to play the two five but if you can really find the times to play the five as a five two it's going to benefit you but unfortunately i don't think that matters enough and uh i don't think the beasts matters enough either so Fire Guard Destroyer. This is actually really powerful. It's basically shamans don't have a lot of great four drops right now. Oftentimes there's the Pious Shredder. It's not a lot of whole other things you have as four mana as a shaman. Uh, the good thing about this is you can play Fire Guard Destroyer in turn four and still play the Fire Elemental on turn six because you overload your turn five. So you can just play something else. And, and, and this is not going to mess up your Fire Elemental turn. This card is very strong. Uh, four mana for. Basically, it's a 4 mana for a 4 6 to a 8 6. So, anywhere between. A f Wait, no, 7 6. Yeah, so anywhere between a 4 6 and a 7 6. The 7 6 does get BJH, but again, like 4 drop is kind of the, the limit. I guess it's technically around 5 mana, but it's not. I mean, first of all, it's kind of rare that it even gets BJH, but it's not that much mana, so it's not so brutal to get BJH as well. I mean, I can just. I, I basically think this is going to be a core shaman card. It's one of the. So yeah, that means that this card is a very, very, very powerful card because it's rarely that a card is added that becomes a core card, something like a uh, swipe level core card or shield mini bot level core card and, you know, like fire multiple level core card. And I think I can see this being basically in every single shaman deck. So this is pretty much going to be one of those like 5 out of 5 or 4.5 out of 5 rated cards. Very, very powerful. Like a game changer for shaman, I guess, is because it might be a little bit weak, so... Flame Waker. Oh man, this is probably my favorite card of Black Rock Mountain. If only because I really like, I, I, I just really like this card. Uh, I don't know if it's the strongest, but I do think it's very powerful. Three man for two, four. After you cast a spell, deal two damage random split among all enemies. You can kind of compare this to like Violet Teacher, Gadgetan, Archmage, and the fact that like you get value from it after you cast every spell. I do think that effect is probably stronger than the one one from Violet Teacher and like the earlier you can get this kind of effect, the better because you can combo combo easier with spells. For like it's kind of like a must kill minion. A two four for three isn't exactly bad. Something interesting is that mage doesn't have a lot of good three drops if you're playing tempo mages other than other than Kieran Toro. Basically like non mech Kieran, non mech tempo mages. Something something like the tempo mage that people have been playing with mana worm and frost bolts. I forgot the card. Two mana deals four damage. Anyways, tempo mage. Uh, also, it could be good in something like a grinder mage that I've played before, where where you're trying to get a lot of value from Echo and Duplicate, and a lot of the problems with that deck is you never really had a strong 3-drop. Basically, you were stuck playing like BGH and MC Tech as your 3-drops for, for the most part, and you just didn't have anything solid on 3. Having a 2-4 that really, that really gives you a lot of benefit from spells is really good. I think this is much better than the GVG 3 drop that Mage got, the 3 mana for a 3 3 mech with spell power. I mean, so many of. Spell power actually, surprisingly, is not that great on Mage because spell power really benefits AoE spells like Swipe and Consecrate, like things like that, or Phantom Knives, a lot more than single target. And unfortunately, 
Mage doesn't actually have any AoE until late game Flame Strikes and Blizzards, and um, so early game spell power just doesn't work out too well for Mage. And this is like a way where you can get this kind of like a pseudo spell power and also get benefit from like from playing Secrets and Arcane Intellects and uh, Unstable Portals. I mean, I'm not counting Arcane Explosion as AoE because it's so weak. So Gang up. Choose a minion, shuffle three cops to enter your deck. So this is kind of cool. I don't know. I, honestly, it's hard for me to judge this card. Rogue is a class that fatigues out a lot just because of how it works. You're either you, you know, double sprint or, you know, you got just in. You're drawing so many cards and a lot of times, Rogue, you actually have trouble killing your opponent before you run out of cards at the end. It's like a really common scenario, especially playing something like Rogue versus Warrior. Uh, I do think that at first, like, because I have like kind of like a magic background, this kind of effect would be like awful. I, I initially undervalued this kind of effect a ton in Hearthstone. I actually think that this card is is actually pretty interesting, even though it's like basically you're paying two mana for nothing. <laughs> like you're paying two mana for a spell that does nothing immediately. It's like it doesn't draw your cards. It basically does nothing. It doesn't kill anything. It just it's just two mana go bye bye. But it makes your deck better. I don't. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm having a hard time doing this one, so I'm not sure. But I I know that rogues do use the weirdest things, so... <laughs> gang up, perhaps. Well, they'll use it as well. Imp Gang Boss. So this was the card that I initially thought was the strongest card in Black Rock Mountain before I saw Emperor Tharassian. I think a lot of people might under underrate this card, I'm not sure. But because the reason why I think this is so strong, you can't compare this card to... Um, to something like Grim Patron, for example. It's not when it when it takes damage and survives, it's whenever it takes damage. So if you want to think about it in another way, you can almost think of Imp Gang Boss as a strictly better version of Harvest Golem. Because a Harvest Golem is basically a three mana for a two three, that when it dies you get a two one. This is basically a three mana for a two four, which is bigger, that when it dies you get a one one. So just that part is already very comparable to Harvest Golem, if not better already. And and the fact that it's not when it dies because even if someone one-shots the imp game boss, you'll still get a 1-1, one, one, like a Harvest Golem. Um, otherwise, though, you can get multiple imps, perhaps. You start trading with imp game boss multiple times, you can, you can get multiple imps as well. It's really good to buff this minion, for example. If you buff this with Defender of Argus or the like, it's it can get insane value. Uh, it's also a demon, which, which Warlock desperately needs more of. It allows... This is like a card that really enables Void Caller combos for more mid-range uh, mid-range warlocks instead of just like using Draxus and Melganus. I can see this being used in basically any non-handlock. I don't probably handlock's not going to use it because they generally want to tap but Zoo is I think I mean no one's going to use Harvest Golem over Imp Game Boss on Zoo. People don't use Harvest Golem all that much in Zoo but Imp Game Boss is extremely strong. I, I would say it's just it just seems like an insanely high value card, even if it doesn't look at it on, on first glance. If you just think about it, compare like the Hard Skull perspective, you can see this card being super strong. And yeah, I thought this card was basically the best card before I saw Emperor. And, then, and now I'm not sure, so it, it is really strong though. Uh, Lava Shock, I don't think... 2 mana, deal 2 damage, unlock Overload mana crystals. Uh, I don't have a lot to say about this one. I don't, I don't think it's very good. I don't know. I mean, you, there are a little bit more overload stuff, but for the most part, you're ra you're rarely overloaded that much. It's a very situational kind of thing. If you just want, no one's gonna use a, a two mana deal two damage to shaman. Shaman has so much of this effect already, and, and rock butter, lava burst, crackle, lightning bolt. There's no like, there's no reason to have an, another one. And to unlock your overload mana crystals occasionally, it's not consistent enough. It's too situational. And situational cards would be way more powerful, so. Quick shot. Okay, so this is a, kind of another interesting card. Deal three damage. If your hand is empty, draw a card. Um, so I guess basically it's a strictly better version of Dark Bomb. But basically what I was saying about this effect was in the standard Hunters right now, you have too many situational cards with Unleash the Hounds, uh, Kill Command, eat Iron Beak Owls, and things like that. I honestly feel like Quick Shot really is promoting... A different type of hunter a hunter that's more based on minions and swarming your opponents and running less situational cards i can see quick shot immediately being useful in a deck like mech hunter for example using things like mech warper uh the hunter have the hunters have a three mana mech that buffs their other mechs those kind of decks have a lot less situational cards you can replace quick uh, kill command with quick shot in, in mech hunter and you can just drop all your mechs and then quick shot people down at the end otherwise it's still a two mana deal three 
Um, I do feel like this is a very powerful card, and I, I, I could see this being used in a lot of different type of hunters, but I see it being best in a hunter that's really cutting things like Unleash the Hounds and the Owls and, and, and things like that, and really trying to storm your opponents on curve with mechs and running out of steam and then getting value from quick shot. So, very powerful card though. Uh, Resurrect. So, yeah, this is like how situational cards need to be priced and powered, you know. Something that's why Lava Shock is so weak. If you think about how weak Lava Shock, how weak Lava Shock is compared to Resurrect. You know, they're both like kind of weird situational cards, right? And this one's just much more powerful. Even then, I'm not sure how strong Resurrect is. The immediate synergy I can think of is with Injured Blademaster. If you Resurrect it, you get a 3-7 and not a 3 or a 4-7 instead of a 4-3. For the most part, though, a lot of Priest cards aren't actually... A lot of Priest minions aren't actually that strong. Like, even something like Cabal's Shadow Priest, if you Resurrect it, you don't get the Battle Cry. Um, and Priest is a class that generally doesn't use a lot of big minions. We'll have to see if this card is, is used... Priest though does like a lot of variety of effects, but unfortunately Priest is so synergy based as a control deck that it's hard to add in another situational card that doesn't line up with like the Shrink Master combos with Cabal and uh, and the Pyromancer stuff, kind of, so yeah, I'm not sure. It might be used in a new type of like controlled Priest that's using bigger dragons, but, and it also might be used in, I don't know, if you're trying to get injured by Master somehow. Or, Revenge, 2 mana whirlwind, if you have 13 or less health, deal 3 damage, and 12 or less health, deal 3 damage instead, I don't think it's very good. Whirlwind isn't great, I don't even know if this is better than whirlwind, probably worse. Having 12 or less health, like if you want a card that you have 12 or less health to be powerful, you can just play a Molten Giant, 0 mana for 8-8 eight, eight, pretty much, so I don't have a lot to say about this, so I don't think it's good. And this video is kind of running really long, so... Solemn Viggle, uh, 5 mana draw 2 cards, costs 1 less for each mana, die this turn. It's kind of hard to say. I don't think this is that great. I mean, if you think about it, like, a lot of times people are saying that you can just kill, suicide a lot of your own dudes to draw cards. If you want to suicide a lot of your own dudes to draw cards, why don't you just play Cult Master? Because just play Cult Masters. If you suicide two dudes, you get two cards. This one, you'll still have to play, pay three mana for AIs. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's that great, honestly. I can see it being useful after Consecrate, but... As a Paladin card, it's it's kind of weird. I do think a Paladin, since it's, even control Paladins are more minion based than other control decks, kind of like always making dudes. I feel like you're a lot of times you're better off running Acolyte of Pain in those decks. So. Twilight Will, it is this is a dragon one mana two one dragon. That's the cool thing, but it's kind of cute in the sense that it's a one mana dragon. But ultimately, Zombie Chow is much more reliable, and having a one mana dragon with the Battle Cry, it's hard to have other dragons for the Battle Cry because again. On turn one, it's super hard to keep a Ysera in your opening hand. There's not a lot of small dragons, so I don't think it's that good. And honestly, if priests just want a one man two three, they generally don't care about healing them, healing your opponent with Zombie Chow. And also, Zombie Chow has synergy with Alcani anyways. So um, nine mana, seven eight, Volcanic Lumber. It dies to BJH. Druid probably is the worst class for this effect, with no board clear and not a lot of minions themselves. You can't really combo this with Force Nature either, for the most part, it caught, because uh, Force Nature already costs too much mana. I don't, I don't think it's very good. It's kind of, kind of too vanilla. So <laughs> I guess that's all. Thanks for watching, guys. This is my GVG card review. I am excited about the set. I and mean, I think that there's a lot of interesting cards, uh, but for the most part, it seems pretty hard to make a dragon-themed deck. Definitely interested in seeing how it goes, though. So, so hope hopefully you guys enjoy this video.